congratulations, Mr. Novak. I wish we all the teachers could inspire as many winners as you did. Excuse well, me, I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's just beginner's luck, that's oh, all. I'm afraid there's no such thing, really. It's more like beginner's enthusiasm. And I wish there was some way to prolong it. Well, again, congratulations. Thank you. If she thinks she's old, she hasn't looked in the mirror lately. Oh, uh-oh. Yes, sir. Ah, I'd like a room on a floor without children, convention ears, or deaf televiewers. In other words, I want it quiet 24 hours a day. Yes, Mr. Uh, Hardy. I can't seem to uh, locate your reservation. Probably because I haven't made one. <laughs> oh, uh, do you know this woman with that group of men over there? How long do you plan to stay? <laughs> Who knows? Excuse me, um, aren't you Rand Hardy? Ah, a man who reads. Well, I'm John Novak. I, uh, I teach English at Jefferson High. It's good of you to confess. Such a thing is a habit of coming out. You have teacher written all over you. Oh, I do. Well, it's uh, probably the chalk dust. Tell me, why do you teach? Why do I teach? Well, why do you write? You sound interesting. What did you say your name was? Novak. You know, uh, every time I read one of your books, I, I feel like writing you a fan letter. Why don't you? People who don't like my books always write letters. Well, frankly, I had my doubts as to whether a letter would ever catch up with you. Sooner or later, Mr. Novak, everything catches up with you. You know, I don't think there's an English teacher in the country who wouldn't give up a month's pay just to meet you. Do you know how many teachers have lost their jobs simply for putting my books in their supplementary reading list? <laughs> well, I feel someday your books will be assigned reading in our schools. And I know some of my colleagues would like to meet you. Really? Well, perhaps I'd like to meet them. Though, at this moment, Listen, how I... about tomorrow? You see, we're having a meeting at the Jefferson Literary Club, and, well, if you'd be willing to give a talk, I'm sure every teacher in the English department will show up. I can't imagine a better audience. Okay, good. Three o'clock. I'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I just met Rand Hardy. Rand Hardy? Where? Oh, he's just going down the elevator now. Sorry to rush, show. I've got a few papers to correct tonight. Back. I've been thinking about Rand Hardy coming here. Yeah, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? I'm afraid it might be too exciting. I don't really think it's a very good idea. Why? I'm surprised you take it on yourself to issue such an invitation. Well, I, I am head of the literary club. Yes. But how much do you know about Hardy? Well, I know his books. And are they the kind of books you want our students to read? Well, not all the students, but certainly the ones in the literary club. I see. You do know that he's not included in the curriculum. Yes, but I think that's something time will correct. Perhaps, but uh, 
In the meantime, I think you might be wise to withdraw that invitation. Uh, Miss Pagano, that, that would deprive all of my students of meeting a Pulitzer Prize winner. And keep the more impressionable ones from, from being exposed to a man who, well, who left school at the age of 16, who divorced three wives, and was a total failure as a father. I, I don't see what his, what his personal life has to do with his professional life as a writer. Well, nothing to debate the merits of Rand Hardy's work with you, Mr. Novak. If you don't cancel the invitation, I feel certain Mr. Bain will. Why don't we concede that he's one of those lone, rare, uh, thoroughly self-educated individuals and uh, uh, talk about uh, what effect canceling his visit might have here on our students? The students can't be harmed by, by something they aren't exposed to, Al. But a school, maybe, Jane. Life would uh, certainly be simpler if, uh, if we confine our studies of authors to those who have long since passed on to their final resting place, wouldn't it? Yes, isn't it? Of course, a simple life isn't necessarily the most uh, rewarding one. You know, in my day, in my day, yes, where have you heard that before? But in my day, and I uh, imagine the same is true today, Every boy wanted to run away to sea. And I suppose the, the reason most of us didn't was the fear we might drown, at least figuratively. So to, to introduce our boys to someone who didn't drown, it's, uh, it's bound to lessen that deterrent, isn't it? So in that sense, I, uh, I'm not particularly pleased with uh, the thought of Rand Hardy's visit here. Then, uh, may we... Uh... May we cancel the visit? Mm, no, no, let, let, let me straddle the fence a little longer, Jean. It's, uh, it's comfortable up here and there's a good view of both sides. I know that, uh, I know that a man uh, can create beautiful things and, and still not be the kind of man that uh, we want our children to emulate. And as you pointed out, Hardy's books contain some, some pretty uh, unpleasant things, e even shocking, but... Uh, so does life contain some unpleasantries. So I wonder if we're, if we're doing our uh, students a favor by shielding them from life, Jean. Because it has a way of catching up with us sooner or later, and, and when it does, I think we're better prepared for dealing with it if, if we recognize it. Al, I realize we, we have to recognize life, but do we have to recognize Rand Hardy? Well, how can you... Uh, how can you possibly deny his existence? Hmm? No, I think that, uh, that we'll let our literary club have a good look at him close up. Listen to what he has to say, question him, and uh, form their own conclusions. This is all of us. What, your entire department? Oh, yes, everyone who was able to come. Oh. Thank you. Well, today's guest needs no introduction from me, so it's with great pleasure and great honor that I introduce Rand Hardy. Well, I'd like to make a long speech about a great many things. But the many things that I would say would not be half as interesting as the things that you would say. Therefore, I want to hear from you, and you, and you, all of you. All right. What do you want to know? Why did you quit school at 16? It was illegal to quit any earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sorry you didn't go to college? I'm sorry about a great number of things. But that is not one of them. When did you first decide to become a writer? I don't know. Maybe it was one day on board ship when I found a copy of Martin Eden. Maybe it was when somebody I knew had a story published that I thought I could have written myself. Or maybe it was one day 
in a pub. A rainy day when I actually sat down and started to write. Mr. Hardy, what advice would you give would-be writers? Marry into a publisher's family. <laughs> Seriously. Go out and have life clobber you. Try to come through it alive. If you do, then maybe you will have something to write about. Thank you. Do you draw your characters from life or imagination? I photograph them from life. And I develop them in some hidden dark room of my mind. And I display them on the printed page and disclaim for all to read and none to believe their resemblance to any person alive or dead. Why is so much of your work preoccupied with war? I hate war. Anybody who's seen war close up does. But I've benefited from it by the stories that I found on or near the battlefield, by the excuses given me to get away from myself and from my own problems. But no writer no matter how far he's involved, is ever a true participant. The writer part of him, the objective, uh, selfish part, is busy greedily accumulating materials for future use. That's why every war story you read, no matter how honest, is basically dishonest. Each has been written by a writer for profit. And in war, the real participant gets no profit in any possible way. Well, do you think it's a good idea for a writer to take a menial job? I think it's a good idea for a writer to stay alive. And the job will help him stay alive and give him material to boot. The more distasteful the job, and not all distasteful jobs are menial, the more he's likely to work at his writing as a means of escape. Uh, what is your next book going to be about? Life. Well, can you be a little more specific? I hope to be in the book. Do you think a writer should marry and have a family? That depends on whether they'd put up with him. Most families won't, as I've discovered. How many of you want to be writers? Don't ever admit that to anybody. A writer is a thief. He steals scenes, characters, dialogue, and like all thieves, he works better if people are not aware of his presence. Aren't people always aware of you? Not if I can help it, and sometimes even if I can't. Do you remember any of your high school teachers? Uh, not particularly. What did you like most about school? Leaving it. <laughs> Mr. Hardy. Uh, yes, Mr. Novak? Um, I have a question. Do you think it might have helped you if you had finished school? Not for a single moment. However, I'm not qualified to answer that question since I did not finish. Hmm. Well, then you wouldn't advise everyone in this class to leave school, would you? I would advise them to listen carefully to their own hearts and minds and to be very wary of outside advice, including mine, Mr. Novak. When do you expect your new book to be published, Mr. Hardy? Very soon, any minute now. Oh, dear. Have you got a title for it? Yes, Thank you'll you. see it in the bookstore. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. How long will you be in town? I don't know yet. He's great, Mr. Novak. Yes, he's a fine writer. More than that, he's a philosopher. Man, he's got all the answers. And Mr. Novak, this is a fine literary club meeting. Thanks a lot. Yes, well, thank Mr. Hardy for that. Well, to think, a man without a good education can go so far. I it kind of, kind of makes you wonder. No, it doesn't make me wonder at all, because there's still no substitute for formal education. A school of hard knocks is just that, hard knocks. Yeah, sure. Thanks anyway. You're sore because I didn't beat the drums for old Alma Mater, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I guess I am. Don't you believe in people following their hearts and minds? Well, first, I think they have to know their minds. What about their hearts? Look, Mr. Hardy, these kids can't just hop on the next tramp steamer that comes along. They... Why not? I did. Well, you're the exception. I was the most unexceptional kid you ever saw. It's the things I've done and seen 
the people I've known. That's what makes me different. All right, then tell me this. Why doesn't every kid who, who leaves school to see the world turn out to be Rand Hardy? How many kids do you know who leave school who actually do go around the world? But no, like, I live life 365 days a year, and I still take time out to write about it. And you'd, uh, you'd honestly recommend your way of life still? Lots of people are perfectly happy in their suburban backyards. But those who aren't are entitled to pursue happiness elsewhere. Your constitution guarantees them that. Johnny, how about you? Have you ever thought about taking off in a different direction? No, no, I'm, I'm happy here. Mm. Are you? Or are you just saying what you think is expected of a respectable young English teacher? I tell you what, Johnny. I bet that you have a manuscript hidden away somewhere. There's the steely-eyed glint of a writer about you, Novak. Well, under a growing pile of compositions and book reports, yes, there's the beginnings of them. Huh? What, here at the school? Uh, no, no, at home. Oh. Well, do you mind if I read it? No, not at all. <laughs> Good, bring it to the hotel later. We'll have a few drinks, then dinner, and then we'll talk writing. All right. Oh, Johnny, why don't you run along now? I'll see you later. Oh, are you going to stay here at school? Yes, I think I'll walk around the corridors, breathe in the heady atmosphere of the pedant. <laughs> you don't mind if I call a cab later? Oh, no, I can... Uh... Good. See you at the hotel. I was looking for a roster of the members of your English department. Some of the teachers were so nice, I thought I'd like to remember their names. Yes, uh, most of the teachers in our English department are, are, are very nice. Did you have anyone uh, particular in mind? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. She's rather tall, brunette, very attractive, very dignified. You wouldn't, perchance, be uh, referring to our vice principal. Miss Pagano, would you? Yes. I'm sorry you missed her. Uh, she left early today. Have you 2303, please? Hello? Jean! Jean, is that you? Jean, can you hear me? Oh, well, say when. Oh, oh, when? When? <laughs> oh, you know, I shouldn't be keeping you away from your work. Well, nothing keeps me away from my work. Do you know what it takes to become a novelist, Johnny? It takes ability and it takes time. On the basis of this fragment here, I think you have the ability. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I feel like a man who just struck gold. A lot of people strike gold. But do you realize how few, how astonishingly few good novelists there are? My son, Derwin, wanted to be a novelist. I think it was the only thing he ever really wanted, poor kid. I tried to dissuade him. When that failed, I tried to help him. Maybe I was too harsh on him. Maybe I expected too much. After all, he was a mere boy. Would you like to see how bad his stuff was? Um, well, I'm, I'm not so sure I should be the judge of that. Johnny, I think you're a good writer. I'm not flattering you. I have no time to waste on flattery. I'm asking you to read Derwin's work because I want your opinion, as one author to another. All right. I'll be glad to read it, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> Mr. Hardy? Nobody ever calls me Mr. Hardy. Not even my ex-wives. It's Rand. <laughs> okay, Rand. What, what, you mean right now? Yes, right now, Johnny.
Well, what's the verdict? Well, uh, he's, uh, he's no Rand Hardy. Mm. Johnny, how much time do you get to work on your novel? <laughs> Don't ask. Well, what do you want to be? A writer or a teacher? Well, I think everyone wants to uh, carve his name in a tree or write a book. I don't know, I think I'd like to teach and write. Only problem is, the only chance I get to write is during the summer. <laughs> the summer is a time to go fishing or fall in love. I never start on a book until I stop being in love. My first wife, Flora. I met her in the summer. Yes, yeah, she, uh, she was Viola, wasn't she, in Days of Splendor? I keep on forgetting that my life is an open book. How do people react turning up in your books? Oh, some sue me, some thank me, some deny ever having known me. My wives do the latter. Oh, come on, Johnny boy, let's drink up. This stuff doesn't go to work until it checks in. Have you ever been to Paris, Johnny? No, not yet. Don't waste too much time. Or else you'll wonder what all the fuss is about. Paris changes with a man's age. And then everything. Not this town, Johnny. It's, it was stifling when I left it ten years ago. It's still stifling. Why did you come back, Rand? <sighs> For the girls I left behind. Any particular one? Tom Wolfe once said you can't ever go home again. I should have listened to him. My trouble is that I've never listened to anybody in my whole life. Do your students listen to you? Oh, I, I hope I get through to a few of them. Why? Because you want to earn your pay? Why are you so concerned? I hate to see a big person squeezed into a small classroom day after day, year after year. After a while you shrink, dry up, until you become afraid to show your real size and your real feelings. Oh. Maybe you just stop growing and feeling and turn into a frightened old maid school teacher. Old maid uh, school teacher, who's that, Ren? Is that the girl you left behind? <sighs> You're a born writer, Johnny. I hate to see a natural resource go to waste. And you can be sure of that on the basis of uh, 56 pages of a first novel. Well, you don't say a whole mountain to determine the quality of the load? You're a better writer than I was at your age. And I'm not judging that on the basis of punctuation or spelling. <laughs> You're very generous. No, no one has ever accused me of being generous. I do try to be honest, when it doesn't cost too much. And in, in that vein, I must admit that I was not a very good writer at your age. Nor do I think that you're going to win any prizes as the year's outstanding first novelist. But you can grow, Johnny if you give yourself time and space, if you leave this pygmy breeding atmosphere. Yes, but a grown man needs uh, groceries, too. You can have a job which will give you not only the groceries, but also a few delicacies that no teacher can afford. What, what do you mean? What job? As my secretary traveling companion. What do you say? Give me your answer right now. No. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Look, I, I'm going to have time to think. Well, I've waited so long for a secretary, I can wait a little longer. But move quickly, Johnny. The race is to the swift. You'll see life as it's lived, not as you read about it in the school library. You'll meet men and women who will show you a world of ideas and none of it secondhand. Come on, drink up. You may even develop a taste for this. I suppose a job is a job. The question is, how much does it pay? Oh, no, Jerry, that is not the question. The question is, what is the job? Secretary. And personally, I would hate to see you do no, it. No, but it's not just a regular secretary. It's a literary secretary. Now, that's Are quite a Are you getting some of the most famous writers started out by being secretary to other writers? Let's ask Miss Pagano. What do you think? Should he take the job? Uh, Mr. Johns, I wonder if I could tap some of your vast reservoir of knowledge in preparing for the uh, Salute to France assembly program, huh? May we? I'll get right on to it. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow, then. Jerry, come on. I'll see you later, John. Okay, Jerry.
you seriously considering Hardy's offer? Yes, I think so. I know we don't see eye to eye on Rand Hardy, but I, I think this is an important decision for you. You're a fine young teacher, Mr. Novak. Well, I think Jefferson can get along without me. My concern wasn't for Jefferson. Miss Pagano. Mr. Novak, listen to me first. And then you can tell me to go fly my kite. Huh? Okay. Perhaps I'm turning into an old maid school teacher, but... Well, age is supposed to bring wisdom. Now, that's a cliche, I know. But I also know that if young people, and... and not only students, would occasionally listen to their elders, they, they could save themselves a lot of heartache. Miss Pagano, try as you will. You, uh, you cannot convince me you're an elder. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, um, I know the appeal Rand Hardy exerts on the young. I know it's, it's an unhealthy one. It's, it's all-consuming for a teacher as well as a student. Yes, but a writer isn't a superman, Miss Pagano. Hardy made that point to me. Oh, a writer is more than a superman, Mr. Novak. A writer can, can create a world, and he can find people who are willing to inhabit it. And if it's a world where, where only the, the strong and, and handsome survive, well, what happens to the lost souls who try to find a place in it? I don't know. Do you want to inhabit Rand Hardy's world? Well, I'd like to write like Rand Hardy. To write like Rand Hardy, you have to live like Rand Hardy. How did you become such uh, an authority on Rand Hardy? I knew him. Goes flying clear out of the ring. Actually, the referee starts counting. Cut that out, he yells from somebody's lap. Wait till I get back in there first. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, they really fought in those days. Why, I remember one time. Johnny, join the party. What's the matter? Don't you approve of my friends here? They're a good bunch. Though if it were up to them, the only writers who'd make a living would be the sports writers. I used to be a sports writer once, Johnny. Did you, did you know that? You said you wanted to talk to me about something important. Don't you think the fact that I was a sports writer is important? In many ways, it was the happiest time of my life. At least there were no critics to worry about. <laughs> well, why should you worry about critics? Because they're a treacherous, lecherous lot. They've always showered plenty of praises on you. Well, they don't fool me. They wouldn't know a masterpiece if it hit them in their fat heads. What are you drinking, Johnny? Uh, well, it's a little early for me yet. The only way I can meet my quota is to start early. I'm afraid my friends thought you were rather a wet blanket, Johnny. <laughs> well, I suppose I am. Good boy. It's good for a man to know what he is and where he is. And where do I belong? At ladies' teas? Where the tea is too weak and the ladies are too old? Rand, these people aren't your friends. Why? Because they don't know Baudelaire? Because they don't know Rand Hardy. Johnny, would you like to read my new novel? Well, yes. Yes, I would. Good. Go and get it.
right, all right. Go ahead. Go. Rand? Hey, just an up, Johnny. Oh, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Well, what did you think? About what? Earth. My latest and greatest contribution oh. to literature. Holy mackerel, Rand. It's two o'clock in the morning. Really? Well, how'd you finish so fast? I didn't finish. How far did you get? I got about halfway through. Well, that's enough. Come on, what's the verdict? Well, Rand, I'd rather finish it before I say it. Come on, Johnny, give it to me straight. Well, uh, frankly, I didn't care for it, Rand. Why not? Well, I didn't find the, the people interesting or, or the problems important. You mean you didn't find the people to your liking? And the problems were ones that you could not relate to? All right, if you like. I, I don't like. Who are you? What do you know? You with your well-regulated, clean little life. Bells to start and end the day with. Everything covered by rules. What do you know about life? You applaud my five-finger exercises. And you walk out on my symphony. Well, they walked out on Mozart, too. Did you like the bit about the Romanian ventriloquist? I, I don't remember it, Brian. How far did you say you got? About halfway through. I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right, boy. Nobody can finish it. What do you mean, nobody? Well, why don't you think it's been announced? The publisher isn't sure that he wants to put his name to it. It's as though I'd suddenly gone color blind. I've read and reread the damn thing 20 times. I swear to you, Johnny, if I know anything about writing, I know that I've achieved a creative peak in this that I have never even approached before. Why can't anyone else see it? Why? I, I don't really know, Rand. <laughs> Rand. Go away. I've been away. Rand, I'll, I'll call the police. Honestly, I will. Are you that afraid of me? What do you want, Rand? You're too late, much too late.
because with that quiz coming up Friday, uh, it might not be a bad idea to review. So what is there about Mark Twain's characters that makes them live on generation after generation? Their innocence. Innocence abroad. <laughs> Only how long can you stay abroad before you lose your innocence? Rand. My name, for those of you who are hopelessly behind, is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Is it funny how a man can spend year after year adding to his life? And in the end, it totals up to zero. What does it mean, kids? Ah, saved by the bell. Look, Rand, I'll have someone <laughs> see him. Go, all kids. Right, that's all dismissed. Go Class to your next dismissed. class. Listen to your teachers. It all adds up to a great big fat zero. Not Margot. Oh, Miss Pagano. Miss Pagano. Gene, they've they've taken him to the hospital. Uh, now, he's all right. The doctor assures me that there's, there's nothing to worry about. Let's, uh, let's sit down. I'm sorry, Al. I, I'm terribly sorry. You're sorry about what? Rand Hardy. It's all my fault. I... Now, Jean, I think it should be the other way around, don't you? You know, after all, I'm the one who made the decision to permit him into our school. You were dead set against it. So if there's any apologizing to be done, I'll do it. You're very kind. No, I'm not kind, merely honest. And, uh, and I think you should be the same to yourself. I, I have been. Well, then why have you hidden it, Jean? See, no matter what you and, uh, and Rand Hardy have been to each other, is there something to be ashamed of? No, no, it's just for a school official to get involved with a man like that, I... Well, school officials and teachers are human beings, Jean. Uh, made of the same material as, uh, as ditch diggers, bankers, uh, clerks, uh, lawyers, uh, what have you. Fallible humans seeking happiness. I don't think any of us should impose superhuman demands on ourselves. Do you? No. No, I don't. But that's exactly what you've been doing, Jean. Trying somehow to create the impression that there was no living, breathing human woman named Jean Pagano. Just merely a, a, a vice principal of a high school. All files and records. No blood, no bones. This time, I, I really do want to thank you. You don't need to thank me for seeing you as you really are. You're a fine young woman, an excellent administrator. But you can see the same thing for yourself by looking in the mirror anytime. Try it sometime. Medical parlance is what is known as a complete breakdown. I never realized that a writer's life was so strenuous. Well, how do you feel now? Oh, I felt better and worse. <laughs> well, you had a pretty close call. I thrive on close calls. Friend, um, Miss Pagano is Margot Starrett, isn't she? Who the devil is Margot Starrett? Oh, she's a small town girl, an unknown writer wrote about when he went back to his father's funeral. You wrote about her in, in A Place of Strangers, didn't you? 
You think you're pretty cute, don't you? You think you've discovered something? No, no, I just know what I read in the book. Well, I lived it. But two whole weeks. 120 hours, we didn't see another human being. No other human being existed for us. I missed my father's funeral. That I'd come halfway round the world to attend. <laughs> she missed a final exam. She probably had to do the course all over again. I haven't thought about her for years. But now I know why I came back. A little late, isn't it? Nothing in life is ever too late. But what about you, Johnny? Have you decided to prospect for the real girl that's inside you? Are you going to work for me? <laughs> You're still going to call your way the real gold? No man ever had it better in life, or worse. Don't give me your answer now. When I get out of this gauze jungle, I'll see you. Well, you better run along, Johnny. I can see you've had enough of Hardy. Hmm. Well, enough for one day, anyway. I'll get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow. Rest is for the wicked. Why did you come back? I left something behind. What are you doing? I'm going to get my clothes. I'm getting out of here. This is no place for a reunion. There isn't going to be any reunion. You, you need this. I know. That was a stupid thing of me to say. It was an honest thing for you to say. You've always been honest, Dan. Yes. Uh, to the point of pain. Yes. Did a place of strangers cause you much pain? Isn't it a little late for you to be concerned about my feelings? I didn't think so. Maybe I was wrong. You have a way of, of admitting the worst about yourself and somehow expecting forgiveness for it. Why didn't I marry you? Well, your excuse was that you'd already been married. Did you mind when I married again? Which time? <laughs> I deserved that. Yes, bitterness is understandable. Oh, no, Rand. Don't, don't translate my feelings into words. You're a master of words. The whole world knows that, but something gets lost in the translation. You know, you've become quite an articulate young lady. How very observant of you. Thank you for noticing me, Rand, and thank you for remembering me. If not by my correct name, at least by the name you gave me. I remember every minute of every hour we spent together. When, Rand? Between wives, when you're, you're thinking up things for your heroine to say. Can't you forget the past? No. No, I can't. I loved you. And you forgot I ever existed. You, you wrote me down on a piece of paper. Reduced me to words on a printed page. Got me out of your system, and then you, you moved on to Newer characters for newer, newer books. It isn't right to, to come into the lives of people like that. Use them and devour them and then and move on as if they never existed. Because they do exist. I'm here now, Jean. Come on. 
Come in. Hi, Rand. How are you? Johnny, how soon can you pack? Pack what? The bag. <laughs> what for? I call the airport. We can be in Paris at midnight on Saturday. Uh, you can't, Rand, not me. And you, Johnny boy, a new way of life. That's your life, Rand, not mine. It will be. No? <clears throat> no, it won't. Can you think of a better? I think I can. Here? Yeah. Here. Wiping kids' noses. Holding their hands while they form the letters of the alphabet. Look, Rand, someone has to help them learn their ABCs. Maybe if someone had helped your son a little more, he'd be alive today. Do you think anyone wanted him to kill himself? Do you think I told him to kill himself? No, I don't think anyone told him to kill himself. I just don't think anyone cared very much what he did. I'm sinking, Jolly. Don't let me drown. Come to Paris with me. I, uh... I thought you wanted me to go for my own good. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a single thing in my whole life that wasn't for my benefit. Well, I appreciate you telling me that. That's all right, Johnny. I try to be honest. But it doesn't cost too much. Now, will you be honest with me? All right. Tell me why you don't want to come with me. Well, I, I like it here. But surely, Paris, the whole oyster world is preferable to this. Now, why? You know, Rand, I'd give anything in the world to be able to, to write like you, to, to travel and... But... Really, why? All right. A hotel room is a, is a hotel room, and a bottle of whiskey is a bottle of whiskey. And, uh... I don't like hotel rooms or whiskey as a way of life. And I don't care where they may be, Paris, here, or Saigon. And, well, to me, your world is a hotel room and a bottle of whiskey. And uh, I don't think I'd like it. <laughs> it's too honest for me, Johnny boy. I saw a picture in the paper this morning of, uh, of Rand Hardy in Paris. Uh, sorry you're not with him? No, not really. No, the Rand Hardys in this world uh, hurtle through life, you know, rushing towards something they probably left far behind. <laughs> and the rest of us, I wonder. Well, the rest of us move at a little slower pace. At, uh, at least we do take time to, to know where we are. Well, you know, I kind of like it right where I am. You know, I do too. Now, if you, uh, if, if, if you ever do finish that novel, uh, Mr. Novak, I'd like to read it. <laughs> you will, Mr. Vane. Don't worry, you will. <laughs> <laughs> 